Hey everyone, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, we've got some people coming in, it's great. It's Thursday the 26th of May, 2022. This is David Newen, your Sophos product manager here at Blue Chip InfoTech, reporting live from Sydney. It's great to see every single one of you today. Today, we've got here with us some special guests from Sophos, and of course, uh, we've got senior product manager, of course, uh, from Blue Chip InfoTech as well. How you doing, Matt? Morning, everyone. Good to see you on here. Incredible, incredible. And we've also got from Sophos our special guest, the illustrious Jared Flanagan. He's the APJ Managed Threat Response Specialist, here to introduce you to you guys today. How are you doing, Jared? Really well, mate. How are you? Incredible, incredible. It's good to see you, and it's not raining anymore, uh, but that's good. Peter Stewart as well from Sophos, the fantastic Peter Stewart. APJ, Threat Response Global Solution Engineer. So that's uh, incredible to see you at this point, Peter. How are you doing? Thanks, David. Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. 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 I think the, the whole country is a buzz right now and we'll, we'll start in a little bit, but, uh, you know, we've got a quick poll just while we're waiting to see how everyone's doing. And of course, I'll do some housekeeping while that poll is uh, up and running uh, just just to see the gauge of how everyone is. And, and if you're just joining, welcome, welcome. I see those numbers popping up real soon. I'm going to launch this poll real quick. Uh, it's just, where are you on your MDR journey? We're here today to learn about managed detection response and that kind of offering. So I've got this poll right here that will kind of get the gauge and, you know, who's a newbie, who's just getting started, who's really into it. And, and we'll, we'll take a look at those results in a quick second before we start the poll. Okay. So while that's going in, uh, Jared and Peter, you know, feel free to pop in and, and see how these these oh, we've got some guys saying no idea that's 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 a good thing because we're here to learn all about it but i'm super glad that you, so some people are uh, you know super honest uh just while that's that's going on the poll is collecting some thoughts and comments we do have a questions panel in there so make sure you get familiar with the go to webinar interface if you haven't already seen it we've also got a chat box all right so make sure you you say hi and we get yourself known we've got an ask me anything or a questions and answer panel uh, at the end with jared and peter so that we can get all those good questions answered we've got the experts here today so i'm really really excited to you know get everyone learning a little bit about mtr mdr and, and how we can offer that down to our customers so if we just close this poll real quick and and share these results you'll see on screen we've got a uh, 56 percent doing a research that's really great you know a lot of potential there a 33 percent have a few customers already so that's good good to see you guys getting back and enabled and uh, you know getting your revision done so you can offer that mdr service down to customers and 11 percent have no idea but we welcome you guys we welcome you because uh we're about to learn everyone's here is about to learn some more stuff today so cool 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 I'm going to hide that real quick and uh, let's get this show on the road. How are we doing? Just before, uh, just before we really quickly hit the agenda and hit everything that we're about to, to go on, it is Managed Threat Response, the Bash and Crash crash course with all of our lovely guests today. We've got all the experts on the panel here to answer your questions and teach you a little bit about MTR, MDR, and where to start. But uh, there is another Sophos Virtual Partner Conference on this year as well at 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Scan that QR code for all the Sophos partners who want that news, all that info, and make sure to get in there at 3 p.m. today. There's gonna to be some good uh, keynote speakers and you know some good stuff on the roadmap, what Sophos is doing uh, in, the, in the next bit of their journey and how we can go from there. So I'm going to give a little bit of time for everyone to scan into that if you want to, but 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So good stuff there. Uh, today, by the way, this afternoon. So a full Sophos pack day for anyone who wants to get into that. So so cool, cool, cool. If you if you have any other questions about that, you're more than reached out to your Sophos account manager in the case that they can also send you that invite and all the good stuff that happens around there today at 3 p.m. AST. So yeah, let's let's hit the agenda. Let's hit the books. What do we got on today? And you know, for anyone who's joining, I just see a few people who's joining today, you'll get hit with the agenda right now. We've got first up and foremost, the most important, Jared Flanagan and Peter Stewart from Sophos, who are going to teach us all about MDR and MTR, give us the 101, the 102, and all the good stuff about it. Then, of course, we're going to uh, get, get into a little bit about how we can you know, help you get those deals on board, how we can help you close those deals a little bit more flexibly with our new finance partners and solutions there. I'll have a quick slide about that. And ask me anything, or if you're 
uh, more frequently know about, uh, Q&A, but this is literally Ask Me Anything here today. I want to encourage everyone to use that questions and answers panel, that box, so that we can, you can ask anything, don't feel, don't feel afraid to ask us about MDR, MTR today with SOFOS or anything in the market really, we're here to help. And of course, at the end of it, there's trivia time. So if you listen in carefully, you could win. Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro is the major prize for first place. Second and third place winners will get a Amazon gift card, $40 there. So that's really cool. And we can, we can see a lot of winners today. I can, I can predict it. I can't wait to see uh, who's our expert on MTO and MDR as they go across. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be about the agenda. We've got, we've got a few people in here now. There's, there's quite a lot of uh, attendees, so I'm so glad. Let's kick it off with Mr. Jared Flanagan and Mr. Peter Stewart. I'm going to hand it over to you guys. David, thank you so much for your energy as always. It's a, a breath of, of fresh air. Uh, look, thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate your time. A special shout out to the people that put in no idea, which I've, I've just is amazing. It blows me away. That's what we're here to do today. We're here to not just expand on the people that are already delivering MDR services, already have customers requesting it, but how to help people get started. Now, the beauty of everything we take you through today and everything we try and do with Sophos is that we want to be completely scalable uh, and we want to be a really great solution for you to deliver a service uh, from day zero. Okay, so I hope you get a lot out of today. Uh, and please feel free to, to, to save questions for the end. So, was managed detection and response ever a hard sell? Yes, there was definitely a time when MDR was a difficult sell. Now I'm gonna go out on a crazy limb here and just assume that no one on this call was around in 1903. If, if you were, hats off to you, congratulations on making it this far. Now, for those that don't know what we're looking at, uh, this is the first use of the electrophone. Now back in the day, people would sit around the living room or the hotel lobby, they'd listen to theater productions, they'd listen to church services on a Sunday morning. And at the time, this was the most incredible piece of technology. What's missing from this is any real look of concern. No concern that this connection would have some form of risk, some form of nastiness, some form of ability to ruin their day. It was all really positive, just a spectacular piece of innovation. Now we fast forward, 2022, and ironically, we haven't kept pace with that same technology. Everything is now connected, everything is now vulnerable, and the outcomes of those incidents are even greater than, than at any time in history. Now, we put this down to what we call the technology dilemma, and there's two key parts to it. The first is, the over-reliance on technology now, the assumption, of, uh, the, the assumption of protection by technology itself. Quite often we see organizations invest heavily in tool sets and tool sets alone, not realizing the gap where they don't have the skills, the time, the ability, or the resource to manage those same tool sets. The second part to the technology dilemma is the sophistication of modern threats. You know, gone are the days of, of signatures alone where we could see a, a worm or a virus and block it at the front door. Modern attackers are smarter, more, more connected, more as a service, they're, and they're using more native resources. So legitimate credentials, legitimate applications, legitimate services, all of the things that are largely evading automated detection. What this means for us, for all of us, uh, is, an, is now a reliance on human intervention, on human oversight to, to remain secure and to be able to deliver security as a service. The challenge there is that there's not enough humans to go around. Uh, now, not only do customers uh, not have the, the human resources to, uh, to man their own security operations, our channel partners largely struggle to attain, retain, train human resources 
to deliver a service to the ability that they need. So what does this mean for us? It means that customers need help. Everything is evolving quickly, rapidly, uh, and very few customers either have a security team or have any interest in becoming one. Now, we all acknowledge on this call that you know, cybersecurity is a full-time job. It requires specialization and it requires the time to combine not just you know, next-gen tool sets, but with next-gen skill sets. Now, for, for most of us, that's an opportunity. You know, we want to be able to deliver that value to customers and allow, you, allow them to focus on what they do best. It's running their church, it's running their school, and leaving cybersecurity to the experts. So it's no surprise then that the MDR market is exploding. And it's on all of us to get onto this gravy chain uh, or we're going to be left behind. And you can see here, even from Gartner, they're expecting a billion dollar increase uh, from 2021 to 2025 in the MDR market. In a separate study we ran, we between mid-market and enterprise customers, over half uh, in the year to come, would be looking at some form of specialization uh, with, with an MDR provider. Now, what we're gonna focus on today, uh, and Peter will take the mic shortly, uh, is these two consumer models and the different scenarios and challenges that come with each and the different challenges and scenarios that come with delivering each. Uh, and it boils down to two main parts, customers with security teams and customers without. And by virtue of that, scenarios where you need to deliver a, a full managed service, a part managed service, uh, and then how you manage the complexities and vendors and tool sets within that. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand the mic to Peter Stewart. Oh, thanks, Jared. Uh, yeah, so um, hi everyone, my name's Peter. Um, I am on the, uh, the managed threat response team um, based in Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, but it does give me the opportunity to basically work with SOFOS MSPs uh, throughout Australia and New Zealand um, around building their security practice. Um, as Jared mentioned, um, a lot of our MSP partners are now starting to think that um, they, they want to they want to expand, they want to offer their customers 24-7 response and, and monitoring um, simply because they're, they're keeping up with the demand of their customer requests and, and what their competition are doing as well. So out of those conversations, um, it kind of there's generally two options. So there is sort of the, the BYOD model where you build it yourself, and there's there's obviously leveraging SOFOS's resources to to do it for you. Um, both of them have positives and negatives. Um, for example, building it yourself has has a huge positive in that no one knows the customer site better than you do. Um, you you probably know the customer network better than the customer does. Um, you understand the politics within the environment. You understand who to talk to and when and, and so forth. Um, but also has the negatives in that, obviously you have to build it yourself, you have to maintain it, you have to um, have the resources to do that. On the SOFOS side, you know, we, we are packaging this up as a service that you can offer to your customers. Um, it allows you to be competitive with other MSPs that are offering a similar, similar service, whether they're, whether, they're, whether they're doing it themselves or they're, they're um, using a different vendor as well. Um, and that has positives and negatives as well, depending on, on how you sort of want to approach that. So when it, when it comes to creating your own SOC, if, if you are thinking about going down that path, there's a few things that you really need to think about. The first one is the products. So if you're going to monitor your customer network 24 seven, um, you know, what products do you need? Do you, are you using, what endpoint protection are you using? What firewalls are you using? How are you securing the network? Um, what management software are you using? Are you using a, a Seam, like a Splunk or, or Alien Vault or something like that? Um, what threat feeds do you have? Because when you're monitoring a network, especially around cybersecurity, you have to stay up to date with exactly what's happening all the time. And as you know, cybersecurity and, and, and vulnerabilities and exploits, you know, can happen very, very quickly, almost, almost overnight, if not, if not sooner. Um, so you have to stay up to date. And then also the products like the notification side. So um, if there is an event happening at your customer site, how are you notified and, and, and how do you send out alerts and those kind of things. The second piece to the puzzle you have to think about are the people. So what, what resources do you have? Um, I talked to some MSPs that 
have built their whole business around cybersecurity. So they already do you know, ISO compliance, they already do penetration testing, they already have digital forensics, um, they already you know, are, are great with firewalls and endpoint protection because cybersecurity is the core of their MSP. And when you have those resources, it actually makes sense to, to do it yourself because you, you have the people there already. You're, you're paying for them to do sort of other parts of the business. Um, why not leverage those skills to do 24 seven monitoring and, and be able to pull them in if there is an incident of any sort of any type. Um, if you don't have those resources, then it's something you have to look into. Like, you know, you need a security analyst that understands, you know, what a particular PowerShell script might be doing and you have to understand how do you respond to that. So you need digital forensics and you need like um, penetration testers, like offensive security staff that understand how attackers get into the network and, and when they are in the network, what do they do? So you want to really build out that team to have these, these people that can then monitor the network and then respond to that network as well. And then finally, the, the, the third piece is the processes. And this is a part that um, a lot of our partners sort of will we'll spend a lot of time in making sure they're correct. So if something does happen on a Saturday, you know, how do we respond? Um, if an alert comes in, what do we do with that alert? Do we have an incident response plan? Do we, how do we action it? What people do we need to bring in? At the customer side, who do we, who do we contact? Is there someone that we, we should be calling at the customer side and so forth? So it's, it's understanding that there's all these different components and you put them all together, which will, will allow you to build out a, a security practice. From my time talking to our MSP partners, it kind of there's two different approaches. So on the left hand side, we have your, your SOC. So this would be if you want to go down the path of building your own, these are sort of the, the components and the pieces that you have to put together to, to build a successful SOC. So we have product A, B, and C, which could be firewalls, endpoints, threat feeds, um, notification software, remote access software, all of these components sort of uh, there to help enable the 24-7 monitoring and security analyst work. Um, they all have their own management consoles, so configuring all those and making sure they're all correct. And then they all sort of feed into a seam, which, which basically needs to be configured as well. So you're, you're not getting a thousand notifications a day. You're only getting notified by the ones that, that really need to be actioned um, because every notification that comes in, your security analyst could be spending time spinning his wheels working on something that's not really necessary. Um, that might work okay with one customer that you onboard, but once you're up to 50, 100, 150 different customers all wanting 24-7 monitoring, um, you could imagine that if every customer is sending, you know, three alerts an hour or alert an hour, if it's just not configured correctly, you could really burn through your resources very quickly. And then we come down to the processes. So having those resources on 24-7, monitoring the network um, and understanding how to dissect a particular type of alert um, how much damage that can do, and then how to respond to that if necessary. So that, that's building it yourself. And this model works, again, really well for our MSP partners, and I've seen it work, work, work well successfully when they have that, all those resources already in the business because they're offering, again, penetration testing and compliance and digital forensics and incident response. Um, if you're offering those services already, this is a really good model to go down because it's not hard, not much of a stretch to take that one step further to, to be monitoring your network, your customer network 24 seven. If you don't have those resources, Sophos can bring in those resources for you. So this is the, the package that we've built. At the moment, we're calling it MTR, which is that 24 seven monitoring. Um, we leverage our products that allow us to sort of get that same information out of the customer environment. Uh, we have teams around the world that can also monitor all of those things. They can, they can respond, they can investigate, and um, they can remediate um, any threat, just the, the threat part of it as well. Having SOFOS allows you to compete with the guys that um, are very security focused, um, I've found. So when I talk to the MSP partners, there's some big security MSPs, I'm sure you know their names um, within Australia, um, that, that have this already set up. Um, and it can be daunting to compete against them. But when you when you leverage a service such as SOFOS MTR, it gives you everything they have, and, and in my mind, then some, um, because you know, you're know you offering your customers this and you're, you're freeing up your resources to, to do what you do best. So how does SOFOS actually do it? So 
On the right hand side, we have all of our products. So Sophos MTR leverages the existing software products that we already sell. So um, Intercept X and XDR, Sophos Firewall, Sophos Cloud Optics, etc. And we even have feeds coming in from Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Um, we, we take all those feeds and that gives us a good visibility over the network so we can understand just what's happening and, and how we can investigate and potentially respond. On the right hand side, or sorry, on the left hand side, we also have um, other areas that we can look into the network. So we're not just waiting for a piece of malware to pop up on the SOFOS central console and then respond to it. We're actually getting deeper into it as well. So we're looking for, you know, failed logins or deleted accounts or certain event logs that pop up. One of the big ones that we see is um, domain administrator accounts. Um, so we're constantly looking at the customer environment and all their endpoints and servers like every five minutes or so looking for, okay, today we have, or at this snapshot, we have one domain administrator account. Like, you know, what's going to happen if, if we see another one, you know, that's that's a concern. And, and that kind of comes into, and actually before I go off this slide, um, at the moment, this is this is kind of what our ecosystem looks like. So we have all the SOFOS products, um, including Microsoft 3 come towards the end of this year, we're going to also be ingesting information from all of your major firewall vendors and endpoint vendors. Um, so if you do sell, for example, SOFOS for the endpoint, but maybe a different firewall vendor, there's a very good chance um, that we're going to be able to ingest those logs as well. So we can leverage information coming from different firewalls or different, different vendors, um, and that's sort of coming towards the, the end of this year. So this is kind of like a breakdown of, of what a, a, an, an investigation actually looks like. So I kind of mentioned that um, we're constantly looking for, in this example, um, new domain administrator accounts being created. So every five minutes or so, we'll run a query. And if, if before there wasn't one, and then all of a sudden there is a new domain administrator account, and it's you know, two o'clock on a Saturday morning, that's going to raise a lot of red flags. You know, we're going to have sirens going off. We're going to be investigating, and that will result in a in a case being created. Once that case is created, a SOFOS analyst will basically pick it off the list, and he'll go, "Okay, I need to investigate this." So, that could be anywhere from a five minute investigation to a five hour investigation, just depending on on you know what 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 the problem is and and how much of an issue. In the case of a domain administrator account, it might only be a thirty minute investigation, where he's like, "Okay, I need to find out." Who created the account? Um, what IP address created the account? Did it come through RDP? Was it remote? You know, all this information we're, we're gathering because we, at the end of the investigation, we put that into a report and give that to you. So then you can either give it to the customer, um, rebrand it, however you kind of want to go about doing that. But everything we do comes with an, an incident report. So you have that information. And then we also have the respond part. If, if we feel that this is a domain administrator account and this is a real concern because someone on the network just created a new domain administrator account that wasn't anyone that, that is part of your environment, then that's that's an issue. So we, we're going to want to respond to that. And there's a few different ways that we can respond. Um, and it, it all kind of depends on how you set us up. So you could set us up to just go ahead and just do it. It's Christmas Eve, I don't care, just fix it, get it done. Or you could you could set up SOFOS NTR to what we call collaborate mode, which is kind of what I recommend. Is where we'll see something, we'll do an investigation, and we'll say, hey, you know, this is a this is a serious issue. Um, I'll tell you what, let's let let's bring in the MSP, let's talk to their contacts, let's get a better idea of what's happening, let's work together to find out what it is, and then we can work with work with the client and, and with your MSP, with your with your resources to resolve the issue. So. It's kind of like a collaborative sort of effort to, to make sure everything's resolved. And again, that's very configurable. There's no sort of cost. You just pick whichever way you want us to work with the customer and yourselves. Um, so it kind of works out in a, in a great environment and allows your techs to stay well and truly on top of everything that's happening. Um, and then again, be able to then talk to the report that we give them so then they can say, yes, I was there during that. And yes, we did this and this and so forth. One big thing that, um, is, is very important when it comes to security is, is the known versus the unknown. Um, this is a challenge that I see with most MSPs that sort of um, build their own. And this is kind of why I sort of added to this report is how do you know what is a threat and what's not a threat? And how do you stay up to date? Um, you know, we, you know, ScoMo might get on the news, not ScoMo anymore, but he might get on the news and talk about the latest ransomware attack and, and all of those kind of things. 
But if you're finding out then, then it's too late because your customer, if they're vulnerable to it, is probably already being hit. So what we do is we sign up for threat feeds and now, but, but even then the, the threat feeds are only getting the information from the vendors. So we at Sophos and name any other vendor in the world, they, we all have research uh, departments and we're researching malware coming in. So at Sophos, we're creating signatures, we're updating our machine learning engine, and we've been doing it since the 80s. So we have teams all around the world constantly looking for detections and, and malware and we're dissecting it and 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 the the labs team and the and the manuscript response team work very closely so like for Kaseya you know we when Kaseya came out before it hit the news before it was on Twitter before it before it was anywhere we were seeing alerts at some of our customer sites and we were investigating it um, and then we gave that information to the NTR team so then we could investigate our clients like which one of our clients were susceptible with this Kaseya issue um, and that was long before it was it was sort of coming through that threat feeds and, and so forth. So one of the advantages I see with going with Sophos is that you have such a huge team of people that are constantly looking for these unknown threats. So you can leverage that. If you do want to do your own, something to keep in mind, you may need to go not just one or two threat feeds, but you might want to subscribe to a few just so you can get all of the information because they don't all cover everything. Okay, so, so what is managed threat response? Um, very quick slide. So Sophos is, if you know Sophos, we're, we're well known for software and hardware. You know, we sell the endpoint protection and the firewalls. And that, that's all about software in my mind. Um, when it comes to MTR, it's really about the people. So it's, it's about the humans behind the keyboards that are seeing these alerts come in, investigating and responding. So that's kind of the, the, the big the big difference between what we've done up until now and to what we're what we're doing moving forward is we're really focusing on the the people side of things because only a, a human can really understand what an an attacking human is also trying to achieve and and it's so fluid and it moves so quickly and techniques change and what we call IOCs or indicators of compromise they they're constantly changing so you have to understand how the pieces come together and um, no, no one does it better than a, a, a properly trained security analyst or a threat hunter. Um, the second point there is we investigate suspicious activity, not just detection. So this is kind of going back to the domain administrator account example. Um, that would never show up in a SOPOS central console or, or any vendor's con console because having new accounts created is, is what people do. Like, you know, as, yeah, as an MSP, you're, you're creating new accounts for users and domain admins and so forth. Um, but for us, it's, it's, a, it's an issue, right? Because we want to, and not so much that we're going to, you know, change it, but we want to at least understand why it happened, and especially if it happened at 2 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, and then finally, the final point there is, is we take um, action. So we're, we're not a SOC. We, we don't just sort of, you know, tell you, hey, there's this thing, go fix it. We're, we're there with you 100% of the way until that is resolved. So we don't, once we pick up an incident and we're working on it, we don't just go, oh, this is too hard or it's too long or, or whatever SLAs, you know, might be put around. We, we'll keep working on it until the customer is 100% is protected and we, we feel that we can move forward and close off that incident. Okay, so this is um, what we call like in the middle of a crisis. So when I, when I talk to the MSPs, um, I like to talk and, and do what we call tabletop exercises. So it's like, okay, whether you're going down the SOFOS path or you are doing it yourself, we want to kind of understand um, if something does happen, what do you do? Like, what is your what is your action plan? And and 2 a.m. on a Saturday is is kind of like my, my default sort of time, simply because attackers love that time um, because, you know, everyone's been out Friday night and everyone's asleep and it's the weekend and no one's around and maybe not looking at the alerts. Um, so they, they, they love this time um, and they, they will pick it. Um, that's why you always see the events happening over weekends, especially long weekends. Uh, so during these tabletop exercises, we talk about, okay, so it's 2 a.m. Who, if it's 2 a.m. this week, who is, who is the person? What's his name? Where, is he in the office? Is he at home? Is his phone on? Like a lot of the times, like the new phones have like different focus modes or sleep modes. So we've been in situations where you know, the, the analyst is there and he's awake and he's maybe watching TV or something, but he's not seeing the alerts come through on his phone because his phone is upgraded and now he has sleep mode on. So doing these exercises is really important to make sure all this works. 
Um, you know, who is the team? Like, what is the incident response plan? So if something does happen and it's a major malware outbreak, global wanna cry type thing, what are you doing? Like, who do you contact? You know, who's your first port of call? Do you bring the team in? Who at the customer site do you contact? Like, you want to have an incident response for each every each customer. They can be barely much the same, but you might change the contact details and the phone numbers. Like, you know, what is the the general manager's phone number because he wants to be notified about something? Um, isolating and containing. If this is a WannaCry event. Like, you know, are you isolating within the domain administrator? Are you turning off the domain administrator server, which could have effects elsewhere throughout the network? Like, what is the plan? Um, and it's good to have these things organized and ready to go because once an attacker starts the attack, the, the clock has started, like it's a race. How far can he go before you can catch up and stop him? And that's kind of the game that we play all the time when it comes to what we call threat actors on a network. So time is of the essence and making sure these things are in a plan is really important. Um, cyber insurance, like, you know, do you have cyber insurance? Does your customer have cyber insurance? Do they, different cyber insurance companies require you to do different responses? So this is something you need to look into as well. So, you know, if there is an incident, does the cyber insurance need an incident report? Does do they do they need you to 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 bring someone in to look at it, like a remediator or or, a, or an advocate of some sort? Um, and then finally, communication and practice. So they're just understanding who's going to talk to when and and just practicing these things. It's it's really important and it will it will save your customer. Um, it, it will it will keep your your staff up to date and everything will just run a whole lot smoother when things don't go don't go to plan. So within, um, just sort of wrapping up, um, we within the, the kind of the, the human element of the SOFOS side, we have, we have two teams. We have the managed threat response team, and these guys are all about prevention. So they're about um, making sure that an attack never really happens. And that's kind of what we're talking about today, the 24 seven monitoring, all of, all of that, the investigation, et cetera. On, on the other side, we have rapid response. So these are kind of the guys that if, if things do start to burn down, we want to pull that team in. And that team is potentially a, a team of 10 people that are basically jumping on a kickoff call, working out what happened and getting in there and resolving it. Um, if you have managed threat response, you automatically have rapid response. But rapid response is its own service within SOFOS. So if you, have a customer call up and say, hey, look, I'm not a Sophos customer, but I'm under attack. You can use rapid response. It is a paid service, so it's, it's gonna cost, um, but, but that is an option for you as well, um, whether it be a Sophos customer or a non-Sophos customer. We, we seem to get a lot of different vendors um, come through and, and they'll come through and say, look, I'm under attack, and, and then we can sort of help them out there. So just a um, brief overview of rapid response. Um, it is our incident response service. Again, it's it's made up of teams all around the world, um, and what their job is to is is basically jump in when there's when there's a threat. So you can either call call us at Sophos. We have email addresses. You can go through support. There's a number of different ways you can get through to to us. Um, uh, we are a 24/7 team, so we kind of follow the sun. Um, once if there is an incident of any sort, uh, you'll get a dedicated point of contact you generally get a, a call once or twice a day. So if you are in an incident, there'll be a, a morning call to say, this is where we're at, and an afternoon call. So it's like, yeah, we've kicked the threat actor out, now we're cleaning up the artifacts, and we're just constantly keeping you up to date. Um, the, the, the time of a rapid response case or an, uh, an incident response is 45 days. So generally, the, the remediation part of your client's site goes for could be 24 to 72 hours, depending on how bad the customer's been hit. Um, and then after that, then we migrate them to uh, MTR. So then they basically have security analysts monitoring the networks for the remainder of that 45 day period. So if anything does happen or the attacker does come back or anything like that, we're gonna pick it up very quickly. Um, and then after that 45 day engagement, then they have the option to either stay with MTR or um, do, do whatever they wanna do from there. And that's that's for me. Um, over to you, Joe. Thank you, Peter. Uh, now, I wanted to close out today with just a few sort of wrap-up points and next steps, uh, useful bits of material for everyone on the call. 
And I wanted to say just a, qu a quick recap and, and how soft loss can help. Uh, as Pete's mentioned, you know, there's really three options here where customers they want to self-manage and, and um, manage these tool sets themselves, where we want to completely um, lift and shift that responsibility to the MTR team. Uh, but for most of the people on the call today, you know, it'll be a combination of the two. So it's really important to note that MTR is solely focused on security. You know, we're not a fully managed service. We are, we are a managed security service. <clears throat> so the opportunity there to work together uh, between ourselves and everyone on the call, you know, allow you to you know, add periphery services, to go deeper and wider with your customers with the knowledge that the MTR team there is, to full, is there to fully support you uh, and to deliver that 24 by seven coverage for you to build upon. So within that, we've also got the MSP program. Now for anyone on the call who isn't already across it, I thought I'd just point out a few, uh, a few of the key points that are gonna be beneficial for you. Uh, the first is our licensing model. So we have uh, both termed and aggregated usage licensing within the MSP program. What that means for you is you can have uh, sub estates and a multitude of customers, uh, the aggregate of which is uh, recognized in your billing. So you could have uh, some customers on Intercept X, some on XDR that are managing their own environments and some on MTR. Uh, the aggregate of all of those means that the price is cheaper, the price banding uh, in that aggregate is cheaper for all user licensing. Okay, so in essence, the more you add, the cheaper it gets across the board uh, and you've got complete flexibility in deployment and management of those devices. Again, for those who haven't uh, had the experience within the MSP program or Software Central, we offer our partners three different dashboards. Uh, now, again, this is uh, at your discretion, what, you, what controls or uh, action items you allow your customers to take. Uh, you can see on the left here, the partner dashboard is where you can, is a central point for you to manage all of your individual customers, their licensing, you know, triage any of the alerts that Peter's taken you through, whether you're taking the responsibility to you know, action those alerts or whether you've passed all of that onto the MDR team. The administrator console uh, is where you can choose to give access to, uh, to the end user, uh, or this is just a more detailed summary of that customer's environment for your own eyes or for that of your operations team. Uh, and the last is the self-service portal where you can uh, give access to any end-to-end -end user uh, and allow them to <laughs> view alerts or, or manage re recovery keys or email quarantine. Uh, so the point is you've got full flexibility uh, within Sophos Central to deliver your managed services with Sophos any way that you like. In terms of materials and tools, we find these extremely useful and use them regularly. Uh, the first one here is a what we call a TCO calculator. Now for any customers that might be believing what you're saying, but want to see some, some hard dollars and figures. Uh, this is a really easy to use calculator that will allow you to put in, you know, some rough guides to the amount of endpoints they've got, the amount of servers and connecting firewalls, and it'll spit out this executive report. Within that is a summary of the comparable uh, Sophos MTR solution with what it would cost that customer to build it themselves. Uh, now we are, just for the benefit of everyone on this call, we are working on uh, replicating this for our channel partners. So if any of you were trying to do the same thing uh, in terms of trading off you know, DIY or, or invest in MDR, uh, we'd have that same tool set for you. In the bottom right hand corner is our latest release. It is a NIST cybersecurity framework assessment. Uh, again, you can choose from basic or advanced assessments, either yourselves or your customers. Uh, are able to go in, answer a few, answer a few questions, uh, and it'll spit out a report uh, based against the NIST framework. Uh, we are also looking to regionalize this and adapt this into an ASD assessment. The last piece here is the naked security blog. So a number of the threat feeds and you know telemetry and security data that we use uh, is then prettified by a group of writers in our global office in Abington. Uh, the product of that is the naked security blog. Uh, now, this is a daily update of global threats uh, in bite-sized uh, bite pieces, so perfect for commutes to work or commutes to home or a boring presentation that you don't want to listen to. Uh, really actionable advice uh, and 
yeah, just an, an excellent source of information. So a quick wrap up from us, why Sophos? Ease of, ease of doing business with Sophos. We've taken you through the different options. Everything we do at Sophos is, is designed to be as simple uh, as possible, uh, not just to deploy, but to manage and to sell. The products just work. You know, we've been doing this since 1985. Uh, all we've done now is, is taken that evolution of the tool set and added the human intervention over top. Profitability at scale. So everything that Peter and I have taken you through today is enterprise grade, uh, but completely scalable down to both one user customers uh, and from day zero for you. So whether you're an advanced partner, whether you're an established MSP, or you're just getting started, it is the same level of dedication from us. It's the same service and commitment uh, for you to then offer to your customers. And integrated and open. You know, everything for us is around how we can continually improve and continually integrate with, with more and more devices, more and more partners. As Peter said, we are working towards a major release uh, based off a recent acquisition uh, later this calendar year, which will mean not just opening of Sophos Central, uh, but opening up of our uh, services portfolio as well. So being able to push and pull and give actionable advice from, from over 40 major security vendors. And David, that is it from Peter and I. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Honestly, that was a great presentation. Like, it, what sells it for me is the 24-7 expertise. It's the peace of mind for all the partners out there, uh, you know, because the, the landscape is so fluid. Everything that a human does, like Peter said before, and of course you, Jared, it's, you know, they're malicious, they're tricky, they're tricksters who try to get into your network, and everything that happens happens so quickly, so fluidly at times when it really no one is awake. So that 24-7 peace of mind for me, uh, that, that's what sells it for me. And especially since there are experts on the field that are always there doing the work for you, it's it's worth the time and it is a service, not just a product. And that that really really speaks to me. So you know, thanks a lot once again, Jared and and Peter. Uh, just to quickly wrap up before we hit all of our question and answers and trivia. So if you have any questions and answers, oh sorry, if you have any questions, put them in those questions panel inside the go to uh, webinar interface. But you know, just just to quickly wrap up, we at Blue Ship, of course, offer Sophos. We're with a premier Sophos distributor inside Australia. I'd like to say so thank you for joining if you are a Sophos and blue chip partner here we, we, but we try to help every single deal as much as we can you know when it time when it comes down to crunching those numbers every partner here knows about a three year upfront deal being the best value but of course you have to front that upfront deal uh, with customers being you know and, and get those that three years it, the, the cost is a little bit sometimes you know it, it's a bit of a sticker shock you know especially when you're dealing with higher end tier products or or you know products that just go for longer term in general and we're trying to help help out as much as we can by proudly announcing we've got some new finance partners on board. Uh, they're extremely flexible. Uh, they're, they're, they're a new stage inside of financing for IT, MSPs, and any, any kind of partners inside of the channel. Okay, so it's been extremely successful so far. We've seen more than about 40% of all of our MTR deals come over uh, with financing, uh, especially with how easy it is to, to, to do it. It's, it's really simple. If you get that free year upfront deal, for example, and, and you get that uh, inbuilt value of the deal, you can then, then extend it a little bit more and split it into equal payments. We can see on the right hand side right there, there's uh, equal payments, there's ramped payments, deferred payments, uh, and it's a really big custom solution that we're really proud to offer down to all our partners. It's all Sophos, mind you, it's not just MTR, but MDR and MTR, of course, is probably one of the prime prime benefactors of our new offering. Uh, of course, uh, we, we can split it down to custom payments as well, and it goes for software and hardware. The minimum uh, value of the deal is five Okay, so for anyone interested, make sure to get across to us. Email us at sophos at bluechipit.com.au. Address it to me, David, address it to Matt, you know, and anyone at all. Just ask for financing options because we're we're proud in order to present this down and make it easier to crunch those numbers with your customer and get that bottom line at the end of the day. Uh, super fast and easy. But I just wanted to quickly launch another poll while while we're while we're here and just uh you know, just get a get a gauge of of how everyone is going with now that the MTR discussion is rolling off the tongue. You know, what is your favorite selling point of MTR right now? There's a poll up right now if you want to just quickly add in. And yeah, to me, to me, it's 24/7 security. The top choice there. I really, really love that because it is a 
service. It is a service that provides value and value every second of the day. Oh, that's so great. We've got a few people voting in. There's also, of course, adding expertise without adding headcount, like Jared and Peter just said, uh, customizing your engagement you know, with it, because if you want to do those services and become sticky and, and, and you get your customers loyal to you, speaking to you, but you, of course, utilize NTR or MDR your services uh, with Sophos and, and get those experts doing all of the, the good stuff there. And of course, you know, the flexible licensing solutions and MSP Flex or annually, and of course, with our finance options in the case you want to choose that as well. But uh, the polls just are much slowing down now. We've got a, a roughly, uh, everyone's just voted. That's real good. So I'm going to close this poll and share it real quick to, to see those numbers. So it is, the, the winner is 24-7 security. I mean, what else can you ask for when you've got such a crazy, crazy cybersecurity landscape? And um, twenty four seven security is absolutely the way to with the way to go and to and to provide that peace of mind for all your all of your end users. Now that's cool. I'm so glad to see everyone's kind of on the same ball, and of course everyone else who wants to add expertise or you know customize how they deal with providing that MDR solution, that managed detection and response. You know, good to go as well. Uh, make sure that you get those inside of your solutions. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really about it. Let me hide this poll real quick and and get on uh, with uh, anything else that we want to hit in. It's the Ask Me Anything or the Q and A section now. So I'm gonna check the questions box and uh, just see how many questions we've got down here. Feel free to, if you have any questions, pop them into that questions box. But um, I really I really do have one just to kind of get us started and get the ball rolling. Jared or Peter, you're more than welcome to, to butt in here. Uh, but my question is, if I'm in the middle of a cybersecurity crisis, like we had on that slide, it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday, um, you know, I'm, I'm drinking a beer and watching the game or whatever, whatever I do on 2 a.m. on a Saturday, or this isn't a game, or my bad, but just doing whatever, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping on the 2 a.m. on a Saturday, right, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, if you, if I hit a cybersecurity crisis and I don't have MTR, I don't have MTR, I don't have any kind of that solution, walk me through what happens when I call up Rapid Response Center and need someone to help real quick. Walk me through that on a down level basis, you know, down to the Yeah, yeah so, so, oh, sorry, Jared, you go. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, okay. So, I mean, if it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday, um, you're probably going to come through to the US team because they'll be online at that time. So that would be part of part of my team. Um, we will, at that point, basically do a bit of triage. So we'll get an idea of, um, we'll jump into the custom site, we'll find out um, all the information we can um, from a, you know, how bad it is. Um, and then our, our job is in, in the rapid response team is to do the triage. Um, if, if we feel that this is a serious event, then we will um, basically engage with the internal incident response team at SOFOS. Um, where they will basically set up a kickoff meeting with the customer um, and and then just jump in there and, and start start going for it. If they are not an existing SOFOS customer, we'll push out MTR across the environment so we can have visibility of the network. Um, and if they are an existing customer, that just makes life easier. But part of MTR is what we call rapid deployment, which is kind of like a a team of guys that are very, very good at working in compromised environments. Um, and then we'll go through and, and resolve it, kick the threat actor out and try to get the customer, your, your site, you know, back up and running ASAP um, and then continue to monitor that from that, that point on. Awesome, awesome. So fast, efficient and the way to go. Uh, and, and I heard that you mentioned that MTR stays on the uh, on on the client's network, or you guys protect it. How long does that last, and and how long do you take care of us? Because I'm still jittery, I'm still scared of you know that attacker coming back, for example. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So so that the the total engagement is 45 days. So if the incident response team say work for three days to remove the threat actor and get the environment cleaned up, then the the remaining 42 days will be MTR. So that's where we kind of We'll do a handoff to the MTR team and then they'll continue to monitor the network for 24-7 um, for that remaining 42 days just to make sure nothing the attacker doesn't come back or there's there's nothing that was missed or anything like that. Um, after that 45 days then the customer can continue with MTR if they wish or they can move on to, to whatever they'd like to do from that point. Awesome, awesome. No, thanks a lot Peter, that was, that was really helpful. So 45 days after and rapid response is still taking care of you. And that, that really gives me, it gives me peace of mind, man, because 
I'm not sure how uh, you know nifty attackers can stay around for and, and how long they can stay in your network. Once you flush them out, it's, it's still getting taken care of. So that's that's really really good. Uh, so Jared, I've got a question for you in the case that you, you don't mind me asking me. But uh, have we got any really good use case scenarios so far, or, or any best case scenarios you encountered with you know a good customer that we can tell our partners today about? Uh, that comes to the top of your mind that have encountered a problem. What was the problem, and you know how did MTR uh, counteract that, and, and how did the partner or the end user respond to it? Any, any good stories around that? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So I can only use customer names where they've written a case study with us, uh, but I implore anyone interested to go onto the Sophos website where they've all been published under solutions. Oh, look, there's there's a, a range of stories. Most of them aren't positive. Most of them started with. A, a major incident uh, that either warranted going straight to the magistrate response service or had to spend that 45 days in rapid response to make sure it was fully nullified. Uh, but look, it's, there's, a, there's no specific industry, there's no specific seat size that's uh, you know, applicable for the MTR service. So in that group of case studies is everything from enterprise aged care to education to local governments. Uh, look, there's no particular incident that that, that jumps out. Uh, I think it was a most of them follow a, a similar path in that we were we were right there. We were right there. You know, for the most part, I think that many IT managers saw their their life and career flash before their eyes, uh, and that was enough. That was enough to say that I can't keep doing my day to day role uh, and have you know eyes 24/7 on on managing security. Uh, we need that help. Uh, but uh, if anyone wants to go into detail, definitely recommend checking out the, the Sophos website. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Jared. That's really good. Well, um, that, that's good there. In the case you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to pop them in the questions panel. I just dress, addressed a few there that's commonly addressed from our partners. Uh, or, of course, you can email us or any of the crew here uh, after the fact in the case you want to discuss anything MTR or MDR at all. Uh, let's let's move onwards to the to the, a little bit of the, uh, the fun stuff then after the Q&A. We've got trivia time. I'm so excited. We've got trivia time for anyone who's listening. It's a chance to win some prizes, the chance to win uh, some, some of the good stuff uh, that's on offer today. The first prize, first place prize for anyone who comes first in the trivia, Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro, and of course the runner-up, uh, two runners-up, second and third place, will get $40 Amazon gift voucher, you know, just to, just to reward you for sweet treats, and uh, especially on a Thursday afternoon. Friday's coming tomorrow, but uh, you know, we're going to reward you guys a bit early. So let me switch over my screen in order to... Uh, get the QR code up and running, and I hope you guys can all see that. Scan into that QR code or go to crowd.alive and enter the code GTQMS in order to get that get that run for you. You can get it on your phone or on your on your laptop or on your computer, it's all good there. Uh, but if you want to just enter your first name and the initial of your last name so we can identify who's the winners uh, and don't put any silly usernames, please. We, we don't have any uh, uh, bandwidth. We needed this recorded and, and put it up. So it'd be cool not to, to put some some crazy inappropriate usernames there like we've seen in the past that I'm not going to get into that. But we'll give it a, a few uh, we'll give it a few minutes uh, just so that everyone can get in and up and running with this. The trivia is not going to be too long. It's uh, several questions to test how you guys have been listening. Gonna, oh, there's, there's a little bit of a mic, mic stuff up there, but that's okay. We'll keep pushing on. How's, how are we looking for the trivia attendance, Matt? No worries, Dave. Thanks, uh, thanks for setting that up for everyone. Uh, we're getting got about 12 people in now. So, uh, and we'll give, a look, give some people some time to uh, get in and uh, ch choose their name. Of course, make it something we can identify you with. We've had some really strange names before. I think the, the staple work one I can mention is Hungry Wombat. You know, but you guys can use your imagination and what we've seen as, as usernames that are on the school. That, um, that's normally that's normally that's normally Peter's go-to, David. <laughs> <laughs> what are you just saying? Uh, it's getting close to lunch. We've got, uh, got 19 people. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Let's win some prizes before lunchtime. Let's get it started, Matt. What do you think? I think let's uh, let's get started. So uh, with the trivia, we've got a number of different questions. Uh, first question is a practice question. 
Uh, and yeah, there's sort of 15 seconds to ask, answer the question. The faster you answer it, the more points you get. Uh, so let's kick it off uh, with a countdown of 10 seconds. What percentage of end users will be using an MDR, MTR surface? by 2025. Now this is a practice question just to see if you know gauge gauge the room. All right. The answer here is 50%. So uh, we've got a, a lot of people answering that, which is great. So yeah, it's there's huge demand, huge uh, requirement, um, as Jared mentioned and Peter mentioned, this, the insurance, the cyber insurance requires uh, you know people to have certain services or external services. You can't potentially run it all yourself. So, all right, let's kick into the uh, the real questions with live points. Uh, so let's go. An attacker has stolen a user's credentials and is inside the network. What solution will not detect this? All right, so the answer there is the endpoint protection, the antivirus. So if someone's credentials get stolen, they just log in like a normal user. You'll never know that that's a, uh, you know, they're malicious or not. Uh, so of course the other solutions there would help detect that. So a uh, bit of a spread of answers, but majority of uh, the endpoint, great. Let's jump onto the next question. It is cheaper to run my own SOC compared to Sophos MTR, MTR. So the answer there is false. Uh, it is, there's lots of costs, there's lots of overhead, uh, no, and probably the biggest thing is hiring and finding the staff, uh, you know, negotiating salaries, all that sort of thing, onboarding them, uh, there's, yeah, there's a huge, time and also financial costs there. Let's jump into the next question. Risk, limited resources and limited skills are key challenges SOPOS MTR can help partners overcome. Oh no, they've seen the next question. Sorry guys, the answer there is uh, <laughs> True. So uh, yeah, these are some of the limited resources and things that uh, and skills, things that people are missing that they need to use external services for. All right, let's go to the next question five. I need my own security team to offer customers managed detection and response. All right. Of course, the answer there is uh, false. Uh, you know, with Sophos, you can get on board. You don't need your own team. You don't need your own security specialists. Um, you can use the, the security specialists at Sophos to do this all. Uh, next question, guys. Question six. What is leadless threat hunting? I like the, you know, the lead, leadless, you know, wireless. Yeah, or your lead free bullets there. Yeah. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Yep. All right, let's have a look at the answer there. So it's proactively hunting for threats. So this is something that's part of the MTR advanced service uh, where they will proactively uh, go in and do a threat hunt in that environment and not wait for signals. Next question. A traditional antivirus solutions detects when a new domain admin account is created at 2 a.m. Right. Of course, the answer there is never. Well, we've had a few jump on the, the always. Yeah. Good. Probably need MDR, MTR. Next question. 
What is lead driven threat hunting? Let's have a look at the answers. So lead, lead driven threat hunting is a threat hunt started from a lead or a signal of interest. Uh, so this is offered in all SOPOS uh, MTR services uh, and is, is something that's generated an alert um, that then is investigated and maybe discarded or, uh, or escalated. Oh good, everyone's answered the question. A few people always answer the sales questions there. It's the sales answer. I would take up MDF immediately if it got lead generation and sales generation stuff. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the uh, final question, question nine. What is a differentiator for SOFOS MTR service from other MDR services? So good, the answer. So it's, SOFOS can take action uh, and others stop at notification. So a lot of services will, they've got the detection, they'll let you know something's happened, but they've got no way to remediate that or take action on that they leave that up to you to do and it's like I've heard a couple of examples 2 a.m in the morning yeah, yeah who's going to respond at that time um, that sort of thing so you need the need a team there to do that Absolutely, no. all right let's have a look at the the leaderboard here um, so Angela Kenneth and the uh, GTqms as uh, the uh, code of somewhere uh -oh. Someone, someone put their username as the code, but that, that's all right. <laughs> Congratulations to Angela for the uh, for winning the Galaxy Buds Pro. Uh, we've got Kenneth there, uh, and most. And if you, if uh, the person person in third, GTQMS, if you email us and stop us at BlueChipIT or even my own personal email address, David N at BlueChipIT.com.au, we'll be, just take a screenshot of you know your your place, and of course we'll we'll try to you know we'll get you your prize. So don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, awesome. Really, really glad to see everyone around and and here today. I'm super excited in order to uh, you know be here and uh, especially on uh, lunchtime on a, on a Thursday and and be sharing the details of MDR and all that kind of jazz. Uh, a special big thanks to Jared Flanagan and Peter Stewart for joining us today from Sophos. It is absolutely uh, a great time in order for everyone. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing us MTR and MDR. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's about it on the, on the sign up. It's approaching 12 p.m. lunchtime. And we've actually gone a little bit over, over time. Uh, thank you for joining the trivia. Reach out to us for anything SOFOS, anything MDR, MTR. And that's a sign off from us at Blue Chip at SOFOS. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. Thank you.